I'm going to go to lists. In Planning Center People, there are lots of ways to report on data in your database, but the main way is through lists. You may want to contact a bunch of people or change the membership status of a large group of people, and you can do that by building a list. So on this sidebar here, you can see the campuses, which, is, which are managed in accounts and your organization administrator would have to add any campuses you have, any categories just to help, um, help filter your list. And then um, you can see all these different views of lists. So I can see all the lists, I can see my list, any lists that are starred, anything that I've recently viewed, um, all of those lists I can filter by that to see the, the ones that I most commonly need. Um, to create a list, you would click new list, which takes you to the rules of the list. Um, I already have a list that's created, so I'm gonna show you the rules on that list to make it a little bit easier to understand. So I'm gonna go back to the list tab. I'm gonna go to my active members tab. And um, it will take me immediately to the results page, but I'm gonna start on the rules page just to show you how to create rules. Now this, um, list is shared with a, a group of people and, uh, and that's managed in the settings. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But so this list is managed by a group of people and I know that because this uh, condition, this rule was created by Aaron. And I, I like that, that the membership status is active. Like that's what this, this, um, this list is for, but I want to make sure that I see people who are engaging in our church as well. So I'm going to add a new rule to go along with this membership status as active. And I'm going to make sure to, I'm going to add some conditions to go along with it. So I've added a new rule and I'm going to choose uh, people who have attended, and I'm going to go through these pretty quickly, but attended any event, any location, um, on or after January 1st, 2021, so in the last year, essentially. Um, and then I want to see, it can be anybody. I want to see people who have given donors, gave a donation um, on or after January 21st, January 1st, 2021. Um, I want to see people who have attended a group at least one event in any group on or after January 1st, 2021. Okay, so you get the idea, right? So like, I want to see all of these people, but I want to see any of these people. So I can create this rule to list all of these, to match all of these conditions. They will have done all of these things, or I can say any of these things. I do want to add one more condition for people who have uh, um, sorry, their last scheduled plan on or after January 1st, 2021. Okay, so I've got everything set up. These, this is how I know people are active in our church. So I'm gonna click submit and that's gonna be again populating those results. Um, this, there are lots of ways to set up a list and um, it can be a little bit complex. So make sure that you click the question mark and type in using lists or just lists and you'll be able to see how to set up advanced rules or just create simple lists, all of those different things. So this is firing up, it's getting lots of things ready for us. And while it's doing that, I want to show you um, the automations tab. So say I've got all of these active people, my active members in our church, and um, now I want to make sure that they all get, um, get an email every time that a new person is added to this list. So I can create an automation, click create an automation, from people and I can set, um, where did it go? Send an email. <laughs> I'm right on it. Send an email from a template. So I've created a template. I can create a template that says, Hey, thank you for attending for, so consistently, or thank you for um, being active in our church so consistently over the past year. Um, whatever, however I wanted, whatever I wanted to put in that. So I can create an automation and that will be sent to anyone who's ever added to this list. But in order for that to be sent, um, automatically, I need to make sure that this list refreshes. So I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to go to the settings and show you how to refresh a list. So from the settings tab, 
I can turn this on to where it will auto refresh every night. That makes this list stay active, like um, stay, stay current um, every night. It'll refresh every single night. Now, if this was a list that I was just looking for information and I needed to shoot off a message to people and, and I probably won't ever use it again, but maybe I don't necessarily need to set it to auto refresh. But if it's something that I want to come back to over and over again and I want to see the clearest data, um, I can set it to auto refresh. I can also manually refresh it. Um, so if you don't necessarily need it to auto refresh, then you can manually refresh it. Um, and then also in the settings tab, you can see we can add a campus, you can add a category. You can make sure uh, that people have access to this list. If they have access to manage it, then they're going to be able to add those conditions and add rules to the list and remove any rules that someone else has, has added. They won't be able to change it. They'll just be able to add and remove rules. Um, if they can only view it, then they can just view the results who, of, of people um, on this list. So that's, that's the settings. There's one more thing here on the settings that um, is important. And it's, if you want to send a styled email to people in the list, then you have to do that with through MailChimp. So you'd have to create a MailChimp profile or account and a campaign and all that stuff in MailChimp. And then you could sync this list with MailChimp and that would then um, allow you to send an, a styled email through Planning Center people, through MailChimp, <laughs> and that would uh, that would send them a more formatted email. If you wanna do that, click the question mark, type MailChimp, and it'll show you how to set that up. Okay, let's go back to our results. Oh, it's still firing off. I must have done something tricky here. Let me see if I can refresh it. Okay, well, I'm gonna go to a different list and um, show you what you can do with the results. So let's go to active kids without households. Um, so so the, the what I want to show you on this page, I almost like dove into what the rules of this list are, <laughs> but what I want to show you on this page is the things that you can do on this results page. So from here you can select columns and you can say like, I don't necessarily need to see the picture of the person. Um, maybe I want to see their address um, on this page. And so you can change what you're seeing on this actual page. Um, and in addition, you can also see the list rules. So for this, um, this list, I've got, uh, it, this list is, uh, a list for people who are in this list first. <laughs> so it's a list of a list <laughs> and their ages are between eight and 18 years old. And they're, they don't have households that exist. So you can see the breakdown of all these people. So 287 people are in this active in San Diego list. There's 115 people whose age is between zero and 18. And there's 398 people whose, um, households don't exist. But the thing, the amount of people that match all of those things are 11. So that's why we see that amount of people. I can choose to print this list. So if I click this list, I can see a default report um, or I can choose a different kind of report. You can create your own custom reports if you want um, or you can use like address labels if you're sending all these people a postcard or a card of any kind, then you can print out address labels, any of those things. If you want to create your own custom report, you could click edit reports um, and that will help you create your own report. That does require some um, knowledge of code. So make sure that you either check out the um, the article on custom reports or you know something about coding. So I'm going to cancel out of that. I can export the people in this list as a CSV file so that I can see every all of their stuff within a spreadsheet format. I can perform an action on the people in this list, which is like an automation, except it's done right whenever you perform the action. An automation requires something to trigger it. If you perform an action, you're able to do it right there. And then the last thing is our uh, be able to send a message. So you can send, um, an email, a church center announcement, or a text message. If you send an email, you'll be able to have correspondence. It goes back and forth. You can talk to people um, like that. If you send a church center announcement, 
that announcement goes is sent to the church center app and uh, if people have push notifications turned on they'll, they'll receive a notification and they'll be able to see um, see the announcement now that is not something that people can correspond with they can just see it and then the last thing is send a text message so um, if you want to send text messages those are uh, you do have to pay for credits for text messaging so that part of um, Plain and Center people is not free you do have to pay for that um, but but uh, you can send a text message to people and they cannot respond to that text message either. So if you're looking for correspondence, you want to use an email.